In this video, I would like to talk about working with color in Photoshop a little bit. So I'll still be keeping it fairly simple, but there's some ways to work with color and a few little tricks that can make it a whole lot easier. So the first thing I'd like to do is make sure that I have my swatches available to me. So if I look over on the right, I see that I have adjustments and then layers, channels, and paths, but I don't have anything that says swatches. So what I can do is come up to the top of my screen and go to the word window. Then I can come down and I'm looking for swatches. Other than the swatches palette, we can also come up to window and pick color. So these two work very well together and it's not a bad idea to have them both available. What I just did there was to grab my swatches palette and I, I hovered over the color and when it became blue like that I could let go and now these two are hooked together. My swatches happen to represent a few colors that I was using previously and so to get rid of those I could simply click and drag and throw them away. So I'm not, you know, in some weird world deleting colors out of Photoshop or something. I'm just getting rid of these swatches. It's actually just that easy. Okay, if you happen to have a bunch of colors there, don't worry about that right now. Okay, so if I, you know, have a brush active and I want to color something, What I can do is, you know, click and drag, and I see that it's going to color exactly what my foreground color happens to be. I'm just going to undo that quickly. I'm actually going to pull this up so it's on my screen a little bit more, a little bit easier to see. Okay. If I click on that foreground color, it's bringing up that violet, this will give us a chance to look at the color picker a little bit. So the color picker is set up, if we look at the lower right, to work in a few different color models. Right now, and the default way that Photoshop shows it is with H selected, there's a little blue dot here. So we have HSB, these are working together. We have RGB, these work as a set. LAB or lab and then CMYK. So notice you can't actually click the dots by CMYK, those don't exist, but we can change how we're viewing this color picker in different ways. So the first section, hue, saturation, and brilliance. So the H is for hue, S is for saturation, and B is for brilliance. This is one color model, one way to work with it. When we have a blue dot here by hue, that means this large box over on the left is dominated by the active hue. Then we have over here in this tall vertical column all of the available hues to us. When we're looking in this large box, as we move to the left across the top, we're going to take our base hue, which happens to be this violet, and we will be mixing it with white, and this will be making a tint of the color. If we come down in the middle and move to the left, we'll be mixing it with gray, or making a tone of the color. And if we move towards the bottom, we'll be mixing our hue, or a color, with black and making a shade. If I am not comfortable working with that in that way, what I can do is instead click, for example, in the S, the saturation circle. So what that does is it just flips things around. It doesn't give us new colors, but it gives us a way to interact with the color differently. So now we have our, our hue rainbow in the large box. Okay, so up at the top here, if I move my mouse around, it's changing the hue. And then here in the vertical column, I can change my saturation by mixing it with white. So as I move these little arrows down that are pointing at each other, it, I'm getting a lighter and lighter tint, and it's becoming less saturated that way. And then the colors inside this box are less saturated. And as I move this down, I'm working my way through tones and then to shades and making it less saturated that way. And I can pull my mouse up and make them more saturated. Likewise, if I click on the 
B over here, that would change my color model here to a brilliance uh, interface. And so then I have the dark tone here in the vertical and the light over here. Okay, so they're just slightly different ways of experiencing the same color. So once again, the default way is to have H selected, where I have a home hue, if you will, in this large box, and I can change it kind of with my rainbow here on the side. Notice if I switch it, that color, that green color, for example, is still the active one. It's just a different way of looking at it. Down below that we have RGB, red, green, blue. We can look at it in this fashion, which is a little bit more complicated. I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner. And then we also have lab color, which is once again a little bit more complicated. I would highly encourage you, at least when you're starting with Photoshop, to stay in the HSB realm, the hue, saturation, or brilliance. It just makes it a little bit easier. While you're in here, take note that you can actually remember or change the numbers in here to get a specific color. If, for example, this was a really great green, you could keep track of these numbers and you can always get back to this exact green by typing in, for example, the RGB numbers right here. There's also the number down below. This gets a little more complicated, but this is also the quote unquote name for the color. If the color picker is maybe not for you, there's also the option to go to the color libraries, this button right here, color libraries. If I do that, you'll see that there are a variety of books available. So right now I happen to be in the Pantone solid coded library. If I click on that, you'll see there are many, many, many different options. So I could, you know, change this to something completely different. And then you'll see I can scroll through and pick colors this way. Once I have one selected, so I change from a green to this blue, I could just say OK and that would be my active color, or I could toggle back to the picker and that's the active color here. You can go back and forth. So at this point, if I'm happy with this blue color and say OK, you'll see that my foreground color changed and now that's the color that I'm drawing with. I have the flow down. If I change that up, it'll be a little bit easier to see.